But what if Naruto was a Mega Prodigy Part 9? By the way, if you do want to join my Discord, it's in the description. Let's get into the video. The Leaf is now prepared to fight to the very end and win their peace back once and for all. As the Akatsuki had been recruiting new members and getting stronger and stronger, so shutting them down right now would probably be the best and easiest method to defeating the strongest group of Rogue Shinobi, the Akatsuki. The Shinobi of the Lee have been getting stronger and stronger, gathering information and strength, training like there's no tomorrow. And some of them were even preparing to sacrifice their lives to win this fight. As every single one of them knows that the Nine Tails attack could have gone very, very different. And if the Akatsuki has more of those kind of plans up their sleeves, then they would have to be shut down immediately. Else, the village, no, the whole world would be in trouble. Now their preparations were almost complete, and most of the shinobi were ready for the fight of their lives. Not really though, since they did have a major war a few years ago, but we're gonna ignore that for now. It was a big fight. Anyways, all of the Anba were ready to fight. Defenses were rubbed up to the maximum. So if the Akatsuki tried to take the Konoha, the Leaf Village, off guard, they'd be prepared too. All of the possible prerequisites were met. There was no way Konoha could lose at this point. However, Naruto was preparing himself to fight alone. Just in case, as any attack that would hinder the other fighters, he would easily dodge, survive, or block. So he was ready to fight till the very end, alone. Or perhaps with somebody else like Kakashi, if they were able to, or his father. Though those powerful shinobi would likely stay in the village to protect it whilst most of the other shinobi are gone fighting as to not leave Konoha without any defenses, as other villages or even other rogue shinobi would have an easy time taking over the entire village. They gathered up all the fighters to motivate but also make a plan. However, one crucial person was missing. Naruto. Where could he have been? Well, he was actually training in the forest, but then something weird happened. He was just practicing regular stuff, throwing shuriken, stuff like that, just basic, and getting him in the zone, in the right mindset for a battle. But all of a sudden, a figure came from behind through the shadows. It was the tailless tailed beast, Kisame, here to grab the nine tailed Shinshuriki for the plan, as having Naruto alone was the best thing. That could have happened, so he initiated a fight without even wanting to talk. However, bit by bit, Naruto gained ground after being shocked at the beginning that somebody would fight with him, especially somebody from the Akatsuki right now under these circumstances. Kisame tried to get Naruto's chakra from the Nine Tails with his sword, so he didn't have to technically beat Naruto completely, he would just have to drag out the fight and let a sword do the work. But since Naruto saw this, he tried all sorts of things with his Mangekyo Sharingan. He tried to use Amaterasu to burn its wielder as well as the sword, though Kisame was quick to dodge. When matching blades, Kisame had the clear advantage as Naruto's swords basically broke. However, afterwards when putting chakra into them to increase durability and sharpness, it worked much better. Their fight continued and it lasted much longer than any one of them wanted. However, finally, Naruto used his Nine Tails Chakra, which he before had been reluctant to use as he thought Kisame had something up his sleeve to take the chakra when he activated it. Though, Naruto needed to end this fight now, as if any other Akatsuki would join Kisame, it could get that. Or, well, it would just be a harder fight. So Naruto now used much more of his power, including the Nine Tails, and started destroying Kisame. And yes, even breaking his sword. 
not quite breaking it as in shattering it, but the sword did lose its will to obey orders from Kisame as the sword basically just followed the person with the most chakra. And as Naruto was now bombarding Kisame with chakra, Naruto was now the clear victor in the eyes of the sword, which is why the sword wasn't a useful weapon for Kisame at all. Even more tying the odds in Naruto's favor. So, Naruto now won, but before he was able to get out information from Kisame, Kisame did a jutsu to, well, hinder that. To be exact, Kisame was now dead. By his own choice, by the way. Anyways, Naruto got back and reported what happened. The meeting from all the big shinobi groups and individuals had now been over. So Minato went directly to Minato in the Hokage's office, who was still conversing with the elders and others. They were all shocked that somebody from the Akatsuki would do such a thing, and would attempt to in a, basically assassinate one of the Leap's strongest shinobi, which was truly an eye-opening experience that truly showed that it is justifiable to do such things and completely mobilize almost all of the troops of Konoha to eliminate these rogue shinobi. As if they could pull this off now, who knows what they could do in 10 years with that kind of power and it's growing? They could probably kill even the Kage, so they never wanted to let that get out of hand. And that was exactly what they were about to do. Now first, they're going to send an attack squad. This was mostly made of very powerful Anbu, as well as a few Jonin to assist, though it was mostly going to be the Anbu who attacked first, as they could sneak up on their opponents and try to eliminate them. This was led by none other than Naruto, of course, and they first wanted to get somebody named Hidan, somebody immortal who seemed unstoppable. Though when they arrived, there was something bad. Very bad. Not only was it Hidan, the immortal person, it was also Kakuzu. A man likely over a hundred years old, and nobody knows exactly how old he is. He had previously battled Madara. Nah, just kidding. He didn't battle Madara, though he did battle Hashirama, who is likely on the same level as Madara, if not sometimes even shown to be a little bit stronger. However, of course, Kakuzu did lose to Hashirama, though he still got, well, a quote-unquote fight, though nobody actually saw it or spectated, so nobody actually knew how it went. So, of course, they knew he didn't win, because else history would have been very, very different. So, anyways, Naruto and his squad are now about to attack, and even though there was two instead of one shinobi, very powerful, both of them, they were still going to go through with the plans as orders of Naruto. He was not going to back down now. He knew that he had the power to defeat them. There's no way he would turn back now. And so, he was the first one to go in. He immediately did a double combo threw a kunai at Kakuzu and hit Hidan in the stomach, almost as if wanting to have a 2v1, which, well, we don't know if he could do that or not. The two rogue shinobi are immediately caught off guard, and due to his sheer speed, they go somewhat enraged. Of course, Hidan is currently having to dodge attacks, though Kakuzu who has a little bit of time to prepare himself for a battle, is powering up, making plans, and so on. He's not going to lose. Of course, he's almost immortal, and it's very difficult to find his secret. During his fight with Hidan, Naruto actually threw multiple kunai, each at Kakuzu, and whilst no one noticed it, not even Kakuzu himself, they were actually thrown at Kakuzu's multiple hearts, which Naruto had sensed 
with his hidden Sharingan, which he used to look at the chakra flow inside of Kakuzu's body. I know technically this mostly of a uh, Hyuga ability with the Byakugan. I'm gonna say the Sharingan can kind of do something similar. While it's not as precise, it can do something like that. Now, after somewhat overcoming their shock and emotions, the Anbu finally went in to help Naruto fight. As it was kind of weird, he looked like he was smiling. He was having fun. He enjoyed being able to fight against two powerful shinobi. He took pride in his fight, in his battle. However, the Anbu still joined him, and so they were over numbering their opponents and easily defeated them. However, it was a little bit tricky as those opponents weren't the normal ones. Kakuzu had to be hit at certain areas, which were kind of hard to miss. No, actually the opposite. They were hard to hit, as Kakuzu tried his best to hide them and move them around as much as possible, as to make it as hard as possible to hit him in any way, shape, or form, especially on his certain targets. And of course, Hidan, well, he was pretty much immortal, quite literally. They had to take him in for questioning, as there was nothing they could do to hurt him. Well, they could, but he wouldn't die. He was just immortal. Anyways, after a somewhat long fight that was dragged out by their certain immortality quirks, the Konoha team won, and therefore, after eliminating Kakuzu, brought in Hidan for questioning. Of course, tied up, blindfolded, and everything, and his weapon taken away. Luckily, no casualties happened on the side of Konoha, which meant that it was a very, very successful mission as they brought down two of the Akatsuki with no casualties or losses. Naruto's team was now supposed to rest as the other two teams, led by Shisui and Kakashi, could also take care and try something and take down individual members, of course. However, Naruto wasn't gonna let that fly. He had incredible fun just now fighting his two opponents. Even um, numbered, he was having fun. He was happier than ever. The battlefield was where he belonged, and it was all he wanted to do. He got almost addicted to fighting. It wasn't the same as sparring or training. It had kind of kick to it. It had excitement, and the stakes were higher than ever. So Naruto wanted to go to the Akatsuki hideout that he knew that they were currently hiding in. All of them. Technically, their plan was to lure them out one after the other, but Naruto wanted a cake. So, he went in and did his best. Naruto wanted to fight all of the remaining Akatsuki on his own. There was a few of them. Some of the notable ones were Pain, Konan, Zetsu, and so on. They looked weird but also menacing, especially Pain, who had a serious tone, a war-hungry one. Though there was something wrong about him. Naruto knew that he was likely the one with the dojutsu, and he was right. He was, but something wasn't right about his chakra and the way he acted. He seemed like a corpse, though he was clearly standing, living, and speaking like a normal person would. Naruto, before even wanting to have any kind of the hard battle, he immediately powered up, asking for the nine tailed chakra which he was given easily, powering up to about five tails worth of nine tailed chakra. He used his full speed, his array of jutsu, made clones, and so on. He used a perfective version of the wind-style shuriken Rasengan, which he allowed to absolutely annihilate his opponents. Sasori and Daedra easily went down. Daedra tried to lay mines and traps, but 
he was annihilated. Speed and the fact that he didn't go into any of the mines and traps. Sasori, well, he didn't have such a big problem with speed, although he wasn't very fast. Naruto was just too mobile and strong for him. Naruto easily outmatched both Deidara and Sasori alone, without even having to try a whole lot. Then afterwards, the harder battle came, Pain and Conan. Naruto fought a battle unlike anything a normal shinobi could imagine, though with the superior speed and chakra, he was easily able to outmatch Conan, and then Pain, he seemed to kind of fall over dead, and then new pains with a different look and different body came from the shadows. He seemed to be fighting multiple of the same people until all six were down. Then he sensed a string of chakra, something similar to what he felt before, that uneasy feeling that pain isn't truly pain. And it led him to Nagato Uzumaki, one of the Ame children that Jiraiya the Gallant trained during the Second Shinobi War in the Rain Village. And with that, Nagato gave Naruto his Rinnegan in one eye, as he had no longer any use for it. So now Naruto had his Mangekyo Sharingan in one eye, and his Renegon on the other, which over time would develop, but let's get into that later. Now there was only scraps of the Akatsuki left. Zetsu was there, who kept watching from the sides. Maintaining a low profile though, Naruto quickly took care of him as he was not a fighter. Mostly somebody who gathered information and hid. So Naruto had basically on his own defeated the Akatsuki. Then two big shinobi teams that are supposed to come to the Akatsuki hideout to take care of some of them just arrived and saw Naruto come out of the cave like structure and greet them with a smile and different eyes. N -n 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 Naruto what the hell are you doing here? This this is dangerous. You should leave right now. Stop it. He might be an enemy shinobi disguising as Naruto. Listen guys, come on. I'm not I'm not an enemy. I just defeated the Akatsuki, okay? We can go home again. Let's go wrap it up, guys. Naruto seemed cheerful. Like a little kid. Almost as if making fun of the Leafs preparations. And making fun of the fact that it was in a warlike state. Now having fought most of the Akatsuki on his own. Well, he thought that it wasn't really necessary for all this preparation. Just for the small rogue shinobi group. This gained him honor like no other. Everybody feared him. Even some people in his own village. His eyes became legendary. And he was the hero of the world. He was on top of everything. People rumored him to become the next Hokage. Even though he was still so young. If he continued like this for another few years. At maybe 18 he could become a Hokage. And Minato and the others definitely saw it possible. He was mature, intelligent and Whilst a little bit arrogant, she had the strength to back it up. More strength than anyone could even imagine. He is more than fit to become a Hokage. Naruto did indeed become a Hokage later on. Married his former girlfriend, and therefore kind of became part Uchiha, if you want to think of it that way. She kept his Renegon and Sharingan, and the Renegon actually turned into... A Renegon with Tomoe, but it also turned orange. The Tomoe came from the combined use of the Sharingan and Renegon, and their combined chakra flowing through Naruto. However, the orange-yellowish color 
came from the Nine Tails. He affected Naruto's chakra flow and his chakra in total, and he was a big part of Naruto's chakra reserves. Therefore, his chakra in his eyes changed color, making his Rinnegan an orange-like one with Tomoe in it. He was definitely the strongest shinobi anyone had ever met who is currently alive. Stronger than Madara, stronger than Hashirama. She was a god of shinobi, and he became the fifth Hokage too, becoming even more legendary than any of the Sanin or previous Hokage, or Madara. Some said he was the next sage of six paths, some said he was even greater. Some said he was a god from heaven. He was the ultimate shinobi. That's where I'm going to leave off the video today. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This was a great series. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.